Osmosis, the basics. So this video covers in very simple detail what osmosis is and some of the key things you need to know about it and it's geared towards the Leaving Cert Biology course. So start with this first and start with defining osmosis. What is it? It's the movement of water from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration across a semi-permeable membrane or a selectively permeable membrane. Osmosis is a passive process, as in it does not require any energy input by the cell. It's described as diffusion of water, because that's what it is. It's a special case of diffusion. So water is going to move from an area of high water concentration, lots of it, to where there is less of it, an area of low water concentration across a semi-permeable membrane, like in plant and animal cell membranes. If you place animal cells in a less concentrated solution, by less concentrated we mean very watery, so high water concentration like distilled water. Water will move from where there's lots of it in the beaker to where there's less of it in the cytoplasm of the cells, and if too much water moves in, well then the cells may burst, and that's a risk. If animal cells are placed in a more concentrated solution, this time think of a beaker of very salty or very sugary water. Well, this time the water is going to move from where there's lots of it inside the cells to where there's less of it in that salty or sugary solution. So water moves out of the cells. So the cells will lose quite a lot of water, they'll shrivel or shrink, and some cells do get creases on their surfaces like red blood cells, and this is known as crenation. So what happens when animal cells are placed in a solution where the concentration is balanced on either side of the membrane, so it's the same on one side as it is on the other? Well, water is just going to move in and out of the cell in both directions, and there won't be any net movement in any particular direction. So this is what happens in normal conditions. There's no change to the cell. So what happens in plant cells when you place plant cells in a less concentrated solution like a very watery solution like in distilled water? In this case, there will be very pure water and not very many solutes. So water is going to move where there's lots of it in the beaker into the cells to where there's less of it. So water enters the plant cells. Water moves into the cells, into the cytoplasm, and then into the vacuole. The vacuole fills with water and the contents of the cell are pushed against the cell wall. The cell is said to be turgid. When all the cells are turgid, the plants will not wilt. So what happens when plant cells are placed in a more concentrated solution? So imagine a beaker of very salty or very sugary water. Water is going to move from where there's lots of it inside the cell to where there's less of it into the solution in the beaker. So water leaves the cell. And when water leaves the cell, the cytoplasm loses water and the vacuole shrinks because it loses water. So water has moved out of the cell towards that more concentrated solution. And this means that the cytoplasm and the vacuole have lost water. The vacuole has shrunk in size and the cells are no longer turgid. The cells are no longer turgid because the contents are not swollen with water and pushed against the cell wall. So they're now flaccid. In this case, the contents of the cell are pulling away from the cell wall. This is plasmolysis. And the gap between the cell membrane and the cell wall will fill with that concentrated solution, the sugary or the salty water. Two terms that it's worth knowing, the first of which is turgor pressure. This is the pressure of the cell contents pushing against the cell wall. And the second term is osmoregulation, regulating water content. So that's it. That's a basic run through on osmosis. And remember that this is a simple overview. It's a good place to start. Now go on and study the whole topic, transport across membranes. Best of luck.